Are you tired of boring podcasts? Are you tired of paneled and structured podcasts that make you want to watch paint dry? Do you want to listen to an adult-oriented show? Do you want to hear words like f***, <laughs> or personal favorite, <laughs> jungling thunder, <laughs> Droids Podcast, offensive and off topic since 2012, insert unnecessary explosion. What the, come on, god damn it, hold on, and... Oh, oh shit! Michael Bay! To get radioactive treatment, go see your local physician after listening to this podcast. To listen to further podcasts, go to droidscanada.com. Artificial fear. not ready at all nope not at all so uh, the 11th episode of the walking dead is concluded and after a snoring dead as you put last week yeah <laughs> we had a little bit of a change of pace this well, week well no not, not exactly well, well, it, well it took about a half hour Think about a half hour. But it was funny because when I paused, I'm like, you know, we got a half hour. We got a half. We got yeah, faith. you had faith. I did not. <laughs> wow. That's all I, I was going to say. Uh, I'm, just check, I'm just pulling up here. I just can't remember what was in there. <laughs> the Distance. That is the name of the episode. Ooh. The Distance. They did make a lot of distance. They covered a lot of distance in this episode. What happens when you have a car? So, last week we let, left off and we met Aaron, which... The huge news buzz is that he was the gay lover. I'm like, ah, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. He seemed a little fruity. Yeah, he seemed a little fruity. Seemed a little and, bit out there. And then, of course, myth confirmed. It, it was confirmed, <laughs> absolutely. Confirmed with some face the, sucking. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> we had to get involved. We had to pull, I can see it right now. A freaking chalkboard was pulled out. Mathematical equations. Like, <laughs> oh, they made out. Oh, that was easy. Strike it. We're good. Um... Rick wasn't sold with this guy, though. I think that was the very interesting part in the first half, is that Rick was just not sold at all. Uh, when is Rick sold? Never. It, the problem is, sir, is that his beard is in the negative for fucks. Yeah, there's, like, there's, yeah, he's he's got to make up for those fucks he has, you know, left to give. I think it's kind of funny. I never knew that you can go in the negative for the amount of fucks of having. Yeah, He's like negative 23. Which is funny, Route 23. See that? See what I did there? I segued over. I segued over. Um, So after all these trial and errors, Aaron ends up being a good guy thus far. So far. So far. And then he has a gay lover named Eric who gets his ankle broken. Yes. Which sucks. They don't explain how. Oh, they did. 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 Something about um, his car and it rolling over. I'm like, the the roamers, as he puts it. The roamers. It's like, okay. How how do you like run over your own foot? Is there a copyright on the word zombie? I don't think so. Because I, I remember watching like uh, just some type of article about The Walking Dead and how they go out of their way, excuse me, to make sure they do not say zombie. Like you got the lame brains, the roamers, the walkers, the dead is an example. Yeah, there's a couple others that they've used. Yeah. But last week, just to go into this, a major crucial piece was brought into play is that Rick said the infamous line, we are the walking dead, which is the storyline arc that brings him towards Alexandria after watching this episode makes clear expectations why they're going that way now. Um, One thing that me and AJ brought up in the episode, we do not like where Michelle is going. I haven't liked her for a long time. But she wasn't this whiny. Like, it just, ever since Ty, even like the episode with Tyree's like, oh dear Jesus. Why oh no, it's. Put I, her I, down. I, yeah, I've been. We need to find a place to lay low. Yeah, you, she you sounds know, like an old white person. Crazy Katan wielding <laughs> bitch into whiny cry. I need, you know, a house and a white picket fence. 
shut the fuck up and start killing shit. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, we're relying on Glenn, who, how do you take him and his pencil stash seriously? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a full mustache. Took five seasons. Like, Jesus H. Christ is what I'm going to say. And he's like, they're walking down the road. He's like, okay, make sure your guns are up. I, like, I, I, I was think like, I had a better stash than Glenn at like 14. <laughs> I think like, the part about that whole scene when they're walking down the road and they're going to check out that area that Aaron told him about, it's like, pull your guns up. Anything pops out, put them down. I'm like, wait a minute. Glenn's and Abraham is taking his orders? like, And that's why I got a little bit confused because Abraham is pretty much a one-man killing crew. He absolutely wants to be. He doesn't really listen to anyone anymore. And was he not a soldier at one point? I think yes, they, he they was. That. I'm like, why is he not the one leading this? And I'm like, especially going out in, in kind of a scout and recon type sense. Wouldn't uh, it make sense for the soldier to do it? I, um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I think that was the part I didn't understand. Because in the comic book, Abraham was so fucking badass. And I'm not saying that he's not. I'm just saying he's not at the level that I recalled him at. He is a ginger. He is a dyed ginger. Oh, it, no, no. That's a dye job. Oh, I know it's a dye job. You can't but... hide the fact that it's, it's a dye job. Well, yeah, considering it's like fucking fire engine red almost. <laughs> like, you know it's a dye job, but he's coming across, well, so he's got no soul. You know, uh, no ginger. soul? Jesus Christ. I think he's a negative. And just, I'm wondering who's going to kick him. Because I... I, if I remember, I, I think we'll leave it sometime this week. Kick a ginger day. Kick a ginger day is coming up, so I, oh, I want to see someone. She was not happy about that. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, and she didn't like that. I was out today with a lady friend, and uh, she didn't like the fact that I was pointing out ginger kid cookies and how I was going to eat them, in front of, <laughs> eat them in front of her. I'm like, you can watch me eat your family slowly. <laughs> No, that, 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 that didn't go over well. But I appreciate you for being there. You know, sometimes when we have breakfast together on Sundays, we make up some shit that uh, people don't care for. Um, <laughs> but what I noticed about this episode, segue, um, is that it was a lot of morality. And then it turned into democracy. The rictatorship. Rictatorship has been overthrown. I, it's not looking good. Not looking good at all. Apparently the fact that he gives no fucks does not matter. No, no one's giving his fucks. That's not good. Absolutely not good. Uh, it's, it, you know, with the, the mob mentality at that point, you've got one guy that says, we're going to do this. Well, we've got, what, 12, I don't know, rough count. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> uh, I think 12 wins. Yeah. But it, his plan backfired, and it looks horrible on him <laughs> right now because... They, they were going to the Alexandria encampment or whatever, or not the encampment, they were going to meet up They're, with Eric. Yeah. And Aaron constantly kept saying, use Route 16, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe, it's we like... cleared it. It's, it's like the good. new buzzword since gluten-free. It was like, nah! <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Nope, nope, nope. we're taking 23. So oh, what oh, happened okay. on Route 23, AJ? Um... Yeah, mass this, genocide. This, this, this is when when things got good. <laughs> I, I I woke up. I'm oh zombies killed lots. A lot. I, I don't know how many Glenn took out with that car. Was that a Buick? I don't know what it was. I want it, that car. I would say it, it would be a Buick. I want like, it. I want the car. Well, no, uh, the windshield did not pre crack. Or post zombie guts. Doesn't matter. The windshield did not crack. Yeah, but none of them actually hit the windshield. God, I don't know about that. They were going about what. 40 miles yeah, per hour, know, maybe? Well, sorry, we'll use Canadian metrics, you know, because it's better. Um, let's say 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Still, the odds of hitting, there was at least 20. That's that's a low number. I know it's a low yeah, number. Yeah, but they got cushioned by all the zombie guts. That's why nothing broke. <laughs> they got cushioned by all the zombie guts? You know, guts? the first hit just splattered the guts all over the windshield. After that, it was just, it was like a pillow. It... it <laughs> And then it, did, it got worse, because then they get out of the car, they look back, they realize the RV is missing. Um, well, no, like, because they, they slammed on the brakes initially, Yeah. and realized, oh wait, no, you know, this is this is a trap, and it's just zombies. It's whatever. a trap! It's, it's a, a trap! It's a trap. And they kept on going, they pushed through, realized that they they turned off or stopped, turned around, whatever. And then, of course, Michonne's like taking zombie parts out of the engine. <laughs> that was good. I'm awesome. like, really? I'm That's like... awesome. Eh. Awesome. You gotta wonder about, like, okay, what? you're hitting it with the front of the car. They're, they're mushy and everything else to begin with. Should we get, with. like, a car How do you get, here? like, an arm 
under the fucking hood of a car. What if the grill was smashed out? I don't know. We'd the have grill to... wasn't smashed out. Oh, it was intact. Well, then we're going to need to get an automotive specialist uh, in yeah, here. Yeah, I pick stuff like this. She's like lifting up the hood, calling an arm so out. So you're calling like, bullshit. Let me I call understand. absolute and total bullshit. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're calling bullshit because arms and shit got in the engine block, but the windshield was okay because the blood and guts from previous. Oh no, I absolutely call bullshit. Oh, okay, on that too. okay. I'm just, just saying your explain- logic's a fail, sir. No, I was just explaining Hollywood logic. Oh, okay, okay. That is a lot of blood, by the way. That's all. That car started off as a very white. Very nice white car. Yeah, it, it turned out to be, you know, blood red, um, oh, blood red by the time it was blood done. Red. And then now it's like sun dried blood red at the end of that yeah, episode. Yeah, it would be like a sun dried blood Now tomato. it's stained in. Yeah. That, that was actually pretty cool. Like, it wasn't like a huge episode, like, not huge scene of them. I think it got a little bit tight when they got out of the car and then they're going through, like, the trees and mm-hmm. shit where it got a little bit claustrophobic. Glenn almost Glenn, got... Glenn ends up kind of branching off and he sits there and he's just backing up. Like, what an idiot. Uh, I'm like, he's you would stepping think back. That, okay, and, and, what's the timeline at this point? What? We talked about this before. What's the timeline of the show at this point? Oh, jeez. Um, you actually figured it out. Oh, between... Um, at least a year. Definitely a year. Oh, no, no, no. This is, like, since the beginning? Since the beginning, yeah. I think they're, like, two, two and a half years along. Okay, so two and a half years along. So... Glenn has been, and I only asked why since the beginning, because Glenn's been a part of the group since the beginning. And he probably had more time, because yeah. the storyline, I'm going to guess, story, the, the, the actual time started when Rick woke up. Is that what it that, is? That's effectively storyline, yeah. Okay. But when Rick woke up, Glenn was already in the mix for a while, doing yeah. scouting, whatever. You think he would have learned to mind his surroundings at this point, like... I understand he's not going to be a fucking seal or anything anytime soon, but understanding he's going into a pitch black field, and there's a herd, not a walker or two, a herd. Like, mm-hmm. why, first off, why'd you leave the road? Yes, there was a herd coming. Got it. You had the other way you can go. Yeah, well, they were going to go. They were going after Aaron too, right? Yeah. It just, uh, but he ended up smashing the fucking zombie yeah, head he to a rock. It, it, so that kind of got points. I was kind of hoping. That was points there. I'm, I'm getting sick of whiny Glenn too. I just hope with the moving to the next part of the comic book, which I like that Kirkman is following the comic book in the story. Like, well, the storyline's following the comic book to a T, but he's making sure there's twists and turns in there, so you can't completely tell what's going to happen yeah. next. But I knew as soon as I saw the gay lovers come together, you're like, fuck, they're going to Alexandria. It was almost a given. The show is now revisiting now sexual storylines again, which they loosely do, though. Well, the, Since the, the departure of Hori Lori. Well, Governor. Oh, yeah, he fucked Andrew, didn't he? Yeah. And what happened to her? Dead. Yeah. What happened to her when she had sex with everyone? Dead. Dead. Shane. Dead. Dead. <laughs> oh, shit. These gay guys are like, yeah. No, wait, wait, who else? No, Maggie and Glenn are still alive, so technically. Yeah, you they, okay, We you have hope like Obama, because they're still alive. Hashtag the... Obamacare? What? Oh, jeez. Oh. Was there Obamacare? Yeah. <laughs> Not in a zombie apocalypse. No. Is there zombie? Is there Obamacare? If there was a zombie now? apocalypse, <laughs> should we get our zombies vaccinated for measles? Oh, jeez. Oh, well, we gotta easy, be prepared. We gotta easy. be prepared. No, no. <laughs> they're they're anti vaxxers A good zombie is a healthy zombie <laughs> that doesn't have measles. That's right. But they have the hip. So well, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh geez. come on. Well, you shouldn't be having sex with zombies. You know, I'm surprised that storyline has never been touched before. <laughs> There's always got to be some really weird person. You know what? There was. I think it was Repo. The, is that that genetic opera one that came out years ago? What? Do you remember that movie? It was, oh, what was it called? It's some really messed up opera that had Paris Hilton in it. Buddy from Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like the main uh, bookkeeper dude. Giles? Giles, yes, yes. Anthony Michael Head? Yes. And it was like this really weird movie. House of Wax? Nope. It was actually That's called, the only one I a genetic opera. Right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up after. It's oh, like a genetic. It looks no. fucked up. No. Fucked I, up. I don't want to. If it has Paris Hilton, like, come on. Well, it's not. Why well, I've seen her in a movie, too. <laughs> it was in a yeah, high it, production video, yeah. but uh, it had a slightly different rating. She's got no talent. She got no game. Like I'd rather watch the fucking Kim Kardashian one. Anyways, judgment. Um, and at the end of the episode, they I like the fact that they're back in an RV, 
and it's like Dale is yeah. haunting them slowly, and the <laughs> battery died. And I, I'm surprised. I was expecting Glenn to make a comment like Dale showed me because I remember in the first season Dale was always teaching Glenn shit, yeah. and he's like the bat, the extra battery, or whatever. So over the horizon, we finally see Washington in the horizon. Though. Yeah, you see the uh, what's the, it, the national the mon- monument? The national monument. So basically, the, it's uh, still the, there. Yeah, that's weird. Well, it's it's not. <laughs> Well, and every zombies, end of the you're knock it over, you never know. Like, and really? every end of the world movie, whether it's zombies or tornadoes or whatever, like even the Dawn of the Dead, half the monuments were knocked over somehow. Like, yeah. like <laughs> I don't know how they get the uh, Statue of Liberty knocked over. That'd be kind of impressive. You hit it with a boat. That's a big ass fucking boat. Like I mean, we talk, we talking like a yacht, schooner, no, a little ocean bit of a, liner. What about tugboat? Like Titanic tugboat. Tugboat would just fall over. What if Aquaman picked up the tugboat and threw it at the head of the Statue of Liberty? No, he would just use a giant fucking shark. Would he wield the shark like a baseball bat? Or would he drop the base? Oof. I went that far. You know what? It's believable now since Jason Momoa is Aquaman and his picture is kind of sick. So now everything's believable. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, Crossover. I, I'll, I'll give A plus on the casting on that one. That, 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 that was definitely Even though no one cares about Aquaman. <laughs> No, it's a plus for casting. Hey, hey, keep it down. I keep throwing starfish at you. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Alexandria. We end the episode with them at Alexandria. You the hear kids doors. playing and everything. Well, and it goes back to the whole Michonne conversation with Rick. Yeah. And it's like you know he's like when we went to Woodbury. What did you hear? Nothing. Nothing. We, when we went to. Um, he mentions the other one, and it's oh, like... Oh, uh, 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 prison. Did he mention prison? No. no. The prison. He mentions Woodbury. No, Woodbury. Oh, shit. another one, too. And it's like, and what did you hear? Nothing. Nothing. They pull up, they stop the car, and all of a sudden he hears kids playing. That's definitely going to throw you And then, of course, you you know, thankfully they didn't let, you know, make Rick break down and attempt to cry I don't think, like Daryl. Honestly, I don't think he's going to break down anymore. I think oh, he... Oh, I think, I think he could. But now I'm worried. Like, he was tempted. Like, he was close. He was on the verge. Like, this is even pointing out to AJ, and this is where I get worried, is that we, we keep making jokes about the beard, and that is very key. But in the comic book, he is offered a position as the sheriff... And he trims down the beer, so fucks return. And we're all worried about this. Uh, I I don't because then my competition's gone. Your competition's gone, but I, it, it's like miracle ahead. grow for him, you know. Like I mean, he shaves down after every season, and it grows back meaner every year. So, I mean, that beard's getting quite full. That's all I'm gonna say. And the last thing I'll part with this episode is that the gun. What do you think when he hid the gun? Well, obviously he's still being paranoid. At first, I kind of wondered. I'm like, he's like, I gotta take a moment, and he and he goes and he just, you know, random house. Uh, I don't know. Just oh look, there's a house. Like it's right there. He knew it was there. You know, it appeared that way. And he walks over and he sees a, a pile of junk in the back, and he grabs the the top end of a blender. Yeah. Opens it up, kind of like empties it out, and throws a gun in it. Yeah. Because really, in the but end, but the thing about the gun though, the gun had the letter J written on it. I didn't notice anything. I noticed we'll, that. I'll, we'll have to take a quick look at it, but um, really, just Rick being paranoid again. But you know, he has every right to be paranoid, though. I mean, that's that's the thing is that he does have every right to be paranoid because of everything that's been happening with him. They take a risk and they think that everything is good, right? And then, sure enough. He's proven right every single time. Like Woodbury, proven right. Um, yep, there it is. Yep, you are correct. There was so a who J has a letter J? Judith. Why would Judith have a gun, sir? I don't know. I'm just. That's, <laughs> I, fair enough. Like, fair well, enough. It just maybe she's gonna be wheeling double line. fucking Glocks. Hey man, maybe she'll put into like 16 hours in Goldeneye 64, and she'd be fucking vicious, baby. I, I don't. Or well, that creepy baby from fucking At Midnight. I was telling you about earlier. <laughs> that still fucking creeps me out. Um, I, I, I'm thinking. I'm like, well, it's definitely not Aaron. It's not Eric because obviously they're not Chase. So. No, because he and they had six shooters. So where did this gun come from? Now that's making me question. Oh, they have. They I know have we're probably reading into guns, it, but it, it's pretty obvious as to what it is and and i think it's just him being paranoid he has every right to be paranoid well yeah i mean like i was saying earlier they put trust in all these people and what happened in the end like i mean they gave the one cop 
trust for like 10 seconds. Yeah. And what did he do? He tried killing Tyrese's sister. Right? Yeah. Sasha, is that Sasha. what it was? Yeah. And what did Rick do? He hit him with the fucking car and he paralyzed oh, him. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> that was no bounce. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Done. So that's pretty much it for this week. Do you have anything you need to add about this week? You think you're pretty good? No, I, I think we're good. The preview for next week, it looks like it's going to be a boring episode. It, it does look like a little bit of and a And it worries fest. me. It's going to be paranoid, issue, you know, paranoid issues with the community, where they're at, um, getting settled, so to speak. But, eh. All right. Gotta go through it. Yeah, and it looks like, and just to, just to wrap it up, is that it looks like Carl's going to get a little bit of a storyline arc there. No, please no. Well, not? You might find some more chocolate I, I, pudding. I, I, yeah, I don't care. It's definitely not Jimmy Changes. Game over, man. It's game over. Thanks for listening to the Droids You Are Looking For podcast. Stay tuned for next week's podcast. Remember, the Force will be with you always. <laughs>